synergies is a notion that two or more businesses in combination will create greater value than if they are operated separately, where one plus one is greater than two. So, why is synergies important when performing M&A merger model, when building a merger model and conducting an accretion and dilution analysis? A banker aims to determine the impact of an acquisition or merger on the buying firm's earnings per share. A buyer will definitely need to factor in the potential synergies the buyer can get from the merger. Operating synergy is an important reason why significant premiums are sometimes paid by strategic buyers. And that's why is a key assumption factored into an accretion dilution model. So, how are synergies estimated? There are two standard approach we can take to estimating synergies. One approach is the comparables approach, where merger synergies are forecasted by comparing like-to-like -like transactions. In other words, comparable acquisitions are reviewed as a starting point for potential synergies. Initially, it may be difficult to quantitatively estimate synergies as the operations merge as the logistic intricacies are not yet known until post-merger. Thus, synergies may be first estimated qualitatively. Another approach is to take a bottom-up approach by looking internally at the two companies and perform as much analysis as possible. A bottom-up analysis should be performed to see how the acquiring firm expects the target firm's assets and operations to line up and what cost savings can be made. This second approach is more detailed and possibly more accurate. However, it is very challenging for anyone outside of the deal to perform themselves. Here are examples of ways we can estimate M&A synergies. 1. Analyze headcount and identify any redundant staff members that can be eliminated. For example, the new company doesn't need two CFOs. 2. Look at ways to consolidate vendors and negotiate better terms with them. Which is to use your post-merger position to increase bargaining power and purchase goods, services at lower prices. 3. Evaluate any head office or rent savings by combining offices. Again, you might not need two head offices post-acquisition. 4. Estimate the value saved by sharing resources that aren't at 100% utilization such as trucks, planes, transportation, factories. 5. Look for opportunities to increase revenue by upselling complementary products or increase prices by eliminating a competitor. 6. Operating efficiency improvements from sharing best practices. 7. Human capital improvements from top grading exercises. There is also a potential ability to attract superior talent at the post merger entity due to larger size and geographical position. 8. Geo arbitrage, which is reduce labor costs by hiring in other countries, which has a cheaper labor cost if the target is in another country. 9. Improve distribution strategy by serving customers with closer locations. Synergies are not effective immediately after the merger takes place. Typically, these synergies are realized two or three years after the transaction. This period is known as the phase in period, where operational efficiencies, cost savings, and incremental new revenues are slowly absorbed into the newly merged firm. In fact, in the short term, costs may actually go up as the integration incur one time expenses and a short term inefficiency due to lack of history working together and culture clashes. If a culture clash is too great, synergies may never be realized. Let's put all these into context by using an Excel example. This is a simple Excel, separated into three sections. The first section covers our dollar assumptions, which is what is the assumed annual cost and revenue synergies a buyer estimate they can achieve on an annual basis. Again, this can be estimated by our two methods of either using comparable transaction or performing a bottom-up analysis. We also include here the assumed integration cost required to help realize the synergies. Typically, this cost is one-off and incurred during the year of M&A transaction. The second section here cover our assumptions on how much in percent terms of our estimated synergies will be realized in the next five years. Remember, we will not typically realize 100% of the synergies immediately after an M&A transaction. It typically takes years to fully realize 100% of our estimated synergies. Section 3 is basically an output of the assumptions inputted in Section 1 and 2. Okay, let's start with an example. A buyer is currently in the second round sale process and is conducting an accretion and dilution analysis to determine the impact of an acquisition on the buyer's earnings per share for the next five years. But even before performing the five-year merger analysis, the buyer wants to know the potential post-tax synergies the buyer can get from the merger. After using the comparable approach, the buyer estimates they can realize $100 million in annual cost savings through redundancies or slashing headcounts and using the larger merged entity position to negotiate better purchasing terms. So, we key in 100 million in the cell here. The buyer also estimates additional revenue synergies of $50 million per annum by selling the buyer's products to the target's existing customers. We key in 50 million in the cell here. The buyer also assumes there will be one-off implement cost of 100 million to realize all these synergies. 
Let's simplistically assume a 25% tax rate. For phasing, the buyer estimates that half of the cost synergies can be easily realized through redundancies and office closure during the first year. And by second year, the synergies will be permanent realized. So, let's just type in 50% in year 1 and 100% for year 2. 3, 4 and 5, for revenue synergies. The buyer feels the cross-selling of product will take a longer time to fully realize the revenue impact. So, let just type in one third in year 1, two thirds in year 3 and the full revenue synergies to realize year 3 after. Again, for implementation cost, it should only be 100% in year 1. For section 3, all we need to do is to multiply the assumptions we have made above. For cost synergies, simply multiply annual cost synergies of 100 million with the assumed annual phase percent. Let's do the same for revenue synergies and implementation cost. We will just need to sum the synergies and cost up and multiply by the tax rate to get the tax payable amount. The final step would be to sum all these columns up from year 1 to year 5. We are now done. We can now see that, in the short term, which is year 1, there is negative synergies as the implementation cost is much higher than synergies realized. But in the next year, the business will start realizing positive synergies from both revenue and cost synergies. This Excel will form the basics for a merger model or accretion dilution analysis, which we will perform in our other video.